Hello everyone, my name is Gabor Mesar and I am back with the Genomics Bootcamp where we speak about genomics from the beginner's perspective. Today we will talk about a technical tool that is used very often when you deal with genomic data and that is the data merging capabilities and capacities of Plink. In order not to get lost too much in the data, we will use a very small example where we can actually track our progress with our eyes and see what happened in the merged data sets because indeed there are multiple versions and multiple possibilities how to merge the data itself. Also there are some technical issues and possible problems that might come up so we will discuss these ones as well in the video so you are prepared when the time comes to merge the data and follow up your analysis with this merged data sets. So Let's go and see how it is done. So here we are in R to demonstrate the merging process. So before doing that, we will generate data sets. So we will generate three data sets uh, for three breeds with the keep and extract statements. Technically, we can merge uh, both the classical pattern map files and their binary versions but we will go for the classical pattern map files because here we can see actually the data itself and we can also see the genotypes. For the sake of simplicity, we will extract uh, five animals from the Abregale breed from Ethiopia, five animals from the Oitogui breed also from Ethiopia, and uh, five animals from the sun and goat from France. For the SNPs, we will also keep it simple so we can see what happens. So I listed here five SNPs from chromosome one and five from chromosome two. And uh, for the other version, uh, well, five SNPs from chromosome two and five SNPs from chromosome three. It's not visible from here, but you will see it then on the pad and map files. Okay, so we have extracted uh, the data and they look like this. This is how the Abregala set looks like. And this is how the Voitogui set looks like. So it's pretty straightforward, two chromosomes, five SNP each for this small example. The main point of this video is this single line where we merge actually the two data sets, breed one and breed two. We start as usual with the dash dash file statement because we consider the pet files. And then we just say dash dash merge and we specify the name of the other file we want to merge in. We say that we want to have it as a pattern map file again as an output and we provide the name of the output file or the merged file. Okay, so we run the merge line and this is a bit of a longer log file. So I, I will walk you through it. So you see that we had five samples from each data set, 10 markers from each of the two, and the merged data set has 15 variants and 10 samples in total. And this is how the data looks like, or the output merged file looks like. You see that the SNPs on the second chromosome for, were present in both data sets, so these are merged properly. And whatever was not present in the data set, that is the SNPs from, uh, from this other breed, then um, these are all set to missing. And likewise, which was not present in the first data set, but it was present in the second data set, it was also set as missing in the, in the first one for the Abregale goats. So this is gen in general what you can expect when you are merging two data sets that are not totally overlapping in terms of SNPs. Another fairly frequent occurrence is when you need to merge more than two files. So in this case, you don't want to merge one by one because imagine if you need to merge 100 data files, of course, you don't want to copy paste a line 100 times. So for this re reason and for this purpose, you can use the dash dash merge list statement. This takes as a variable, a file name, which I call file list here. And this is how the file looks like. You see there are the file names, the pad and map file names of the other two files that I need to merge. I want to merge together, together with breed one. 
because breed one is specified in the dash dash file statement. And then the job is done in one line and in one step. So let's run this and see what happens. So this is how the merged data set from the three breeds look, looks like. So you see that the breed uh, two and three, they are kind of uh, well merged in a proper way. So there are no missingness in this block, but then there are the, the blocks that are not appearing in breed two and three are set to missing for them. And again, as previously, the block that is not appearing in breed one, it's also set as missing for this breed. And at the end, I want to show you a few possible problems you might encounter uh, during the merging process. First one is a fairly obvious one when you try to merge numeric coding and uh, let's say nucleotide coding data. So let's see what happens. So this is uh, how the log file looks like and you see that it comes up as an error that the variant, probably this is this first SNP, is not biallelic. So this is a keyword that appears quite often because, well, just remember the SNPs are designed to be biallelic. So if it's not biallelic, the blink will come up with an error message. So this was the reason for the error as breed one is in a numeric format. It's nothing wrong with the data otherwise, but it is just in a different format. So the alias are coded one and two instead of the nucleotide coding of breed two. So this is then a problem for the merging. The second possible problem, a bit more sneaky one, is when the alleles for missingness are coded differently. So you see here is the data and uh, this time it has a few missing alleles, for example, here or here. So it's coded as zero as it is with the Plink default. Now the second file also has some missing alleles, um, but in this case, it's coded as a dash which comes, for example, if you handle final reports. So there conventionally the missing alias are coded with the dash. So if you don't do anything with the final reports, you likely get a file like this. So again, there is nothing wrong with the files. So if they are proper genotype files, but in this case, the missingness, the allele for missingness is coded differently. Now what happens? Pretty much the same as, as before. In this case, the Plink recognizes that the alleles that are properly genotyped are kind of the same. Both, in, both uh, are nucleotide coding. And then there is a missingness allele, which is by default zero. But then there is a third allele, which is also a missingness, but, but Plink does not know this because for Plink, the missingness is zero. So this encounters as the dash as a, as a third allele and will complain heavily. So back here in R, just to show you what happens. So you see that it comes up with a bunch of warning messages and then also an error message that again, a SNP is not biallelic and with, the, with a lot of warnings that there is some triallelic SNPs are present in your data set. This is generally a problem. So you need to address this and find out why is this happening? And then of course, correct it and, and run the merging again. And an even more sneaky problem is when you get two data sets, which are one coded with the top format and the other in the so-called forward coding format. In this case, both data sets are coded with nucleotide and also the missingness or the alias for the missingness is usually the same. So this is actually not a problem. This kind of setup is a bit more tricky to generate. So I use some non-public dog data to demonstrate. So you see here that we have three animals here and coded in the nucleotide coding. And if you would scroll, you would find that the missingness is coded as zero. And the other data set also with three dogs. And if you would scroll and, and find also that the missingness is coded as zero. So here, nothing strange is happening at the first sight, but because one is coded in a top format and the other is the forward format, then some of the alleles or actually one, some of the SNPs are not coded the very same way. So again, you, 
you will arrive to into a situation when there are more than two alleles for each SNP because well there are a proper two alleles for each allele in the top set and also the proper two alleles in the forward set but some of the alleles not ev not all but some of the alleles are not compatible in a way that they are not not the same nucleotides for example you see the second SNP here so this is an AG SNP for the top and a TC SNP for the forward because these dogs were genotyped with the very same SNP chip so I know that actually this SNP and uh, this SNP is actually the very same one and you see that there is a problem in the, with the genotyping that they are actually not the same alleles. So this is uh, the output for the merging or for the attempt for the merging. You see that there were three dogs each and uh, quite a lot of markers. Uh, well, we have some warning messages that are unrelated to our problem, but, but the error message again appears with the now familiar message that one of the variants, probably the first one it encountered, is not biallelic. So I will cut it here. I hope you learned something about the merging of the data sets in Plink. You see it's fairly straightforward. Anyway, if you would have any questions or comments or if you have your own experiences about the merging in Plink or in other software, I'm happy to discuss these in the comments below. Also, if you like the video, then push the like button. And if you want to see me more in your YouTube feed, then just push the subscribe button. For today, however, I thank you for your time and uh, have a nice day.